Welcome to Monster Mix, a show where we take something nice and pretty and we turn it into something dark and gritty. This week, the artist Tegan Aku from Samurai Jack, a truly evil being with a very cool look. Let's see what the artist can do with him. <laughs> Action. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Hi, my name is Amir Lam. I am a concept artist and illustrator. And um, yeah, I uh, currently am doing work for Hitbox and I'm really happy to be on the show. Every time I come here, I always have an, op have an opportunity to grow and meet new artists. And um, I'm really excited for this one because Aku is uh, just, you know, one of the most badass villains ever. So, yeah, thanks for having me on. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. That was a long intro. I thought it was just names. Shit. Now I have to pour it. <laughs> oh, now you gotta, you gotta think a little pour bit. Pour your fucking yeah, man, you, gotta, you gotta shoot the shit, bro. Shoot the yeah. shit. I'm David Igo, and I'm a creative director for a statue company called Tweeterhead. And uh, I'm stoked to this. Uh, I've known James for a while. He's asked me to be a part a couple different times. Just timing didn't work out, and Aku was too good to pass up. So, I am super freaking stoked to be in on this, too. So. Yeah. Awesome, brother. And I am James Starking. I am a concept artist and illustrator, and I'm currently based in Washington, D.C. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, my name's Bodega. I'm the expert. My job is to lie. Lie about the truth. That's my job. And I'm from New York, and I know all these guys pretty well, except for David, but he about to become my best friend. We're going to kiss on the mouth later. It'll be great. Right. I'm going like, to put the microphone right here. We're going to feel it. What's the truth anyway, right? Come on. Truth is... Uh, yeah, what's the truth? Whatever you think it is. Whatever you think it is. All right, I'm J.R. Right. Coffin. I'm the host of the show. I also uh, am a concept artist and illustrator, and uh, I am uh, in California with, I think, David. We're neighbors. Yeah. I, I didn't say. I was in Northridge, right by L.A. Yeah. yeah, I'm in a little place called Menifee. Well, it's like Temecula. Think Temecula. Come visit, everyone. If if, <laughs> if, if if there's any perverts watching, that's where I'm at. Try to find me. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Adrian Blom. Hey, dudes. Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? Welcome back. Good to see you. All right, today we're discussing Aku. We all did redesigns. Bodega did one like uh, with his left hand on some lined paper. Really excited. I got it. See, uh, really excited to see his. Um, what y'all know about Samurai Jack and Aku? I know, I know, David, you're a big fan, so t tell me the story. I'm as big of a fan as you can claim to be without having seen the most recent season. So I don't know if I can say. I think I got knocked down a notch or two, but I loved the show when it first came out. I think I was in junior high or in early high school, I believe, when Samurai Jack came out. I think I was in high school when Samurai Jack came out. Yeah, because Clone it came out after Clone Wars, right? Or was it before Clone Wars? I, I don't know. Before. You're the master. Before. Was it before? All right, cool. Yeah, so that was, I think it was in high school when it came out. I just remember, like, all that jumbled together. I just loved the shit out of it. It was such a great show. Saw it so many, every time I was on Cartoon Network, I'd rewatch it every single time. And Aku's always stuck with me because he's such a less is more design. And that silhouette is just so, like, powerful. Like, just those, horn, like, just less is more and effective as hell. And, like I was just super stoked about it. So just like what I took away from this was Japanese shape shifting demon that's kind of like solid shadow fire is like because he just all the black stuff in him it just it feels like it's rigid, but it feels like it's fluid and it changes. I just love that and trying to that's why I tried to incorporate into like my design, I guess. You know, the the, the, the simple designs are the best. I think you know, like if it, if it that's what makes it iconic. So if you Every good design, in my opinion, can be broken down into either two or three parts, and then it's done. Like it has yeah. two or three big, big things about it, like big shows. Like this is, like, like Link was our last show. That was a sword, a shield, and you know he's got a green outfit or whatever. That's Link. You see that anywhere? Like you could have anybody could be wearing that outfit. You'd be like, that's Link right there. You know, same thing with Aku. You got a very iconic look to him. 
But mm-hmm. uh, uh, Amir, what you know? I know you're a big fan as well. Uh, I know that I honestly, I, I really, really like the voice actor for Aku, taken from us. Uh, he was also the voice actor at the time uh, of his death. I believe his most notable role was that that mentor, the Fire Nation mentor character. In oh yeah, Marvel that Marvel. is the same voice. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah dude, the, the the voice is honestly like the biggest thing that sticks with me. I, I think of Aku. I kept like talking in his voice the whole time I was working on it. You know, right? super racist, like a white guy making that voice. But like, I just it's so <laughs> weird, so part of his character. You know, it's like oh. yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, Iwamatsu, di- I believe the guy's name is Mako. Mako Iwamatsu. He died. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's dead. Like, yeah, he's like gone. a young death, or like he had a long, no. healthy he life. A, he had a long, healthy life. He had a long. Yeah, every place him for season five. So that's why I haven't watched it. There you go. Yeah, like when, <laughs> when they get your like, man, that ain't it. Get out of here. That's yeah, not. He, he was born before World War Two, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Well, J- like James Hong, that's another guy, and the, the he's kind of the same flavor. He does a lot of voiceover work. I, I, I had a chance to meet him. He has to choke me for a picture. He's like, "I'm going to choke you, okay?" I'm like, oh, yeah. "I'm like, you're gonna choke me?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm going to choke you." He's that's like, so awesome. he, "He's like," I'm, and they're about to take the picture. I'm like, "You're gonna choke me?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm going to choke." You. I'm like, "All right." And, and then right before I took the picture, he did it. It was he was he's a pretty funny guy. He, that dude's like eighty. He was like eighty eight at Monster Palooza. You didn't set up a safe word with him before he started choking you? Yeah, usually <laughs> taking photos during a choke-off uh, is generally not something you show in public or do at a convention. Uh, that, that kind of thing will get you canceled. <laughs> that'll get... Nah. <laughs> not a new for mm. I'm uncancelable. Nobody can, can, oh, nobody can cancel me. I can say all the things. doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm cancelable. I'm, I'm too big of a deal, bro. I feel that. Got me? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm basically all the races, so I, I get, I'm yeah, also. You're uncancelable too. You're like, what? I'm Filipino. Like, what? You, you could say anything. You're like, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm Samoan. I'm black. I'm, 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 he's I'm like, Latino. Uh, <laughs> he's like Danny DeVito in Twins. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Or uh, the, the main guy in Super Troopers. You know, like the whole running gag is people think he's like, oh, hey, yeah. Kind of, like, <laughs> that's literally my life like people walk up to me speaking all sorts of different languages you know mm-hmm. like just just walking up speaking hebrew like yeah I, I don't and then after a while i just start picking up on different languages people walk up to me speaking spanish and just, just just make yeah, them the feel comfortable there. yeah just make them feel comfortable Be like, <laughs> yeah yeah i got you yeah um uh adrian Baum in the chat says i watched it all and the final session on Netflix. Which one? I need to watch. Like, as soon as we're done with this, I wish we had time between when you asked me to join and today to watch season five because it's sitting there on my Blu-ray shelf of, like, things to watch. I just... It, it, last it, week and a half was crazy for is me. It, is it on any streaming platforms? It's probably on HBO Max because uh, I think all the... I think, like, Primal's on there. So I, I'd assume that Samurai Jack was on there too being Cartoon Network. So, oh, okay. I'd assume. Well, if it's Cartoon Network, it might be on Hulu because they got a lot of uh, Cartoon Network stuff. Yeah, man. There's an app, speaking of apps, uh, a buddy told me about called Just Watch. It's a great one because you can search any movie, any show, and it tells you what it's streaming on for free and where you can buy it for the cheapest. So. Oh, wow. That's cool. You know, I use that tell all. me that. DM me that information. Just sure. watch. Let me look it up. Let's we'll see where it's at right now using the Just Watch app. This is this show is sponsored by Just That. <laughs> I wish with them dollars. <laughs> Adrian, I look for the I look for Samurai Jack on Netflix. I didn't have it. Maybe maybe they, that was you watched it a little while back because it's not it wasn't there. I had to watch the twenty four seven streaming that was on what was it Adult Swim? I think it was Adult Swim. They had it they had it running for a bit. So Star King, what 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 you know about Aku? Were you a fan? Um. Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, I I always thought Samurai Jack was very. Uh, I don't know, the the do- the designs and the style always kind of struck me and stuck with me. Um, what else? I think Aku's design is really awesome, very iconic, and I guess they based it off like a Hanya mask. Um, and so in my redesign, I sort of went. In you know yeah. the the idea of a Hanya demon kind of thing, 
Um, yeah, I, I always, I always just thought the the show looked awesome. Yeah, the the fight scenes in particular were like, like they're all like, like works of art. Like because they have to, mm-hmm. they take away so much. Like I saw this one scene where they're running through the snow, but like literally it's just like a white screen, but with like, like just white bars going by. But like you could, mm-hmm. you could see the line of the snow still. I really appreciated the fight scenes. Uh, I watched a number of them to get inspired for my design. But like the show itself, I was watching it, and I don't know if I didn't watch enough. But the show itself, I'm like, dude, where, like, there's no story. Like, these are awesome fight scenes, but we're moving forward. There's another. Where's the story? What's that? Like, I, I get it. Like, he's trying to get back to the past, but like, what what is it? Because I got well, lost in that. Like, is there more story? Does it open up more? Yeah, there's a movie that leads you into the series. Yeah, the whole, the whole thing, the whole you know overarching about, right? story is awesome. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is one you gotta watch. Story wise. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Nah, nah. That's it. <laughs> the, every episode opens up with a, a a lore recap. It's fucking dope. Okay. Yeah, I just missed it. By though. the way, <laughs> it is streaming for free all five seasons on HBO Max, and then it has one season on Hoopla, one season on Directv, and one season on Adult Swim, and then you have to buy it. So HBO Max, as you can see, all five seasons. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna watch yeah. that, it, it, dude. I, that movie, that that show was so artfully done. Like yeah. every, every single, like not even just the combat scenes, but like everything was done with love. I remember rewatching the show back when I was in college, and I remember being moved to tears by just really good composition and really good pacing and and music, like a uh, sound design choice, just incredible. Yeah, usually the, like the blocky animations like aren't very appealing for me. Like, but then I watched. I'm like, man, what is this going to be about? Because I never even heard of it. And I, and I watched the. I watched a few few episodes. I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. Like how they're how they're handling like the movement and like uh, just all the fight scenes were just super artfully done. Like uh, like exquisite yeah. exquisite choices. Like uh, it was beautiful. Yeah, and all, all the characters. You know, you 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 go in and you're just like. Every single character seems so um, well designed for the purpose that they're there for, and it really yeah. gets to the home of like, like every episode that these characters are, like just the whole episode is crafted to convey that mood of like what the character is all about. And I thought that was really like just like all, all these things pop up. It's just like master craftsmanship, master craftsmanship yeah. all over the place. Genny, Genny, and his team. He always works with like a. a vast majority of the same team he moves it over but whoever, he always works with the best and they're just between this the clone war the 2d anime clone wars show which is the only clone wars to me like i love that i could watch the 2d clone wars on repeat and primal is like one of the best things ever and that all shows like no dialogue and they do he does such good visual storytelling without it with the most less is more components ever that's what's, what's his name again Huh? What's his name again? Gendy Teratovsky. I think I'm. I hope I'm not messing that up. Gendy Teratovsky. Okay. Like well, I can, yeah. go- I can Google. It. I was just curious. Yeah. He is, and he he actually <laughs> directed the the uh, Hotel Transylvania movies, which are surprise. Like they look kind of like those three. Like ah, I don't need to see that. But when I saw his name attached, I'm like I have to see this because he's directing it. Th- those were kind of fun. They, yeah. they weren't super impactful, but they were fun. Like they were watching. Like it was like yeah, this is enjoyable. I watched the whole thing. I think I was on a. <laughs> I was on a cruise when I watched it. So, yeah, yeah. He did, I think that was just a way for him to kind of like, you know, get kind of build things back up, build his reputation up. I mean, his reputation was awesome to me, but I think it's more like the broadest one. So then he could do something like Primal, which was super R-rated, super risky, guy on a dinosaur, no dialogue. It's like one of the riskiest things you can do, and it was just like so well done. So he's he's one of my favorite creatives out there, and he's just lovely. Oh. I'm Primal a, looks really good. Dude, Primal is I'm so check it out. unforgiving. Holy crap. It is. Wow. You you watch one episode and you feel drained. You're just like, what did I just watch? Like, what did I just, so <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Adrian Blom yeah, in the yeah. chat says, uh, um, Samurai Jack, it's on, it's on the African Netflix. You use VPN. So, I don't know. What, what's VPN for you nerds? It's uh, like... Uh, 
it's a software that hides your uh, IP address and it can save you from other places for like security protocol reasons. Mm. So you're not tracked by the internet. Oh, okay. That sounds a little risk dangerous. That, no, that's the way you should be browsing the internet. <laughs> okay. That is the standard. That's the way to, yeah. at this yeah. time, to not get hacked. Like laws for sales and stuff mainly. It's like you can only sell stuff and like there's deals. Eventually all this, I, I totally agree, should go away because it should be global, not so much like territories and stuff like we deal with that with statues all the time like you get a license you can only sell in these territories but it's like dude people will just buy it there and resell it over there like nothing i don't know oh, the shit. idea what how it's so true not to make it all about politics or whatever but the idea that like you could be standing up at the four corners of the united states and there's like four drastically different state laws and you just walk from one to the other is yeah, it's so you're just hopping like, yeah. now I can own a gun, and I'm now like, I can own a gun. <laughs> now I can't own a gun, now I can't, now I can't. Now I, can't. Not, I, I imagine uh, licensing is catching up with like the internet and all the hotness and you know. the. the it'll, it'll take time, but it'll catch up. But that's, that's why I would assume that they have like those kind of things, because like with licensing for television shows, it's like, oh, only in these countries, so... They they do rely on tracking, on, which I don't agree with, but I get it, you know. But this anyway, is that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is also day. sponsored by NordVPN. <laughs> <laughs> nah, NordVPN just got busted for some suspect stuff. Ed's Fox says hi. What's up, Ed's Fox? Um, well, you guys, you guys ready to expose Aaron yourselves to the camera? Time. Wait, what happened? What, what happened? Uh, we're talking uh, VPN gossip. We'll, we'll say this for after the show, though. I want to hear about after that. After the show. Okay. Well, VPN gossip is coming. Uh, Look what you started, Adrian. Now we're going to get into it. Uh, uh, Amir, would you like to would you like to expose yourself first? Yeah, sure. Long ago, in a distant land, there was a samurai, Jack. <laughs> Fucking love it, man. <laughs> I, the master of shape shifting and darkness, sent him back into the past. <laughs> yeah, he's so dope. All right, let's. Yeah, uh, you definitely watched it a few times. You got it down. <laughs> yeah, I really love that. Show. That was just his babysitter's voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's oh, relax. Relax, relax. Relax, bro. Yeah, man. We, we, we don't want to get canceled. I'm uncancelable, yeah. but you're not. Nah, I'm uncancelable. You have to care to be canceled. Mm. Oh, you awesome, can you guys man. see my guy? Yeah, I see that's super I see, cool, yeah. I see your guy. Take Yo, us on the journey. What's up with that BT, bro? That BT. Was <laughs> <laughs> it? Was it BT? You already I'm, know I've been playing so much Death Stranding. Nah, that's a. It's a. It's what the, the bad guys look like in Death Stranding. It's a. Mm -hmm. They're called beach things, and they they look like these, freaking horrible souls trying to pull at you and take you to the other side. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I've had like just that black liquid in my head for like a lot of my designs lately. I've been pumping it into my ip and it fits whatever though. i do it doesn't it because i was thinking like it fits yeah like instead of smoke and shadow it's this liquid like black amorphous like goo that he controls uh with his mind and then he can just make all sorts of different shapes and then yeah it would Ooh, be man, like, let's like see a, them. that looks awesome i want to see the face oh yeah, you want to see the face it's, yeah, it's, I, I didn't have much time for this but yeah, it's it's just like placeholder. Cool. Yeah, thanks, thanks. That's good, bro. You got uh, you got the Green Goblin and a BT, bro. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just mix mix the two together, and you get Aku. Uh, and uh, hmm? yeah, no, no, I'm done for now. <laughs> I like how he made his beard more full too. That's pretty cool. Like like. Like that element, and then that how the fire fully like encases the eyes is really rad. Love those touches. Ah, thanks, man. Yeah, I was thinking like, you know, the eyebrows can just be like, because uh, his eyebrows are like flamey and his eyes yeah. are flamey, so it just like literally comes out of the the skeletal socket there. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, 
Thanks, man. I like the Halo, like little portals where like looks like his arms are coming out of one. I can't tell exactly what's going on with the upper head one, but looks like it's framing the horn thing. Horn. Yeah, yeah. So that's like a big ass like collar piece that's coming oh, out. Oh yeah, awesome. Chest piece, yeah. Ooh. And um, inside this whole, uh, I guess, um, more solid piece of armor, it's like glowing like fire. Yeah, um, love it. Yeah. So, what's good with the facial expression? He looks like he just like nutted. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm Aku. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is his cra- his like, crotch yeah, is forward a little bit. Says, you know, like, uh, he just says his own name because he just loves himself. Yeah. I am the most powerful being in the universe, Aku. <laughs> Oh, but tell me why. When Samurai Jack's hair goes down, this thing goes straight from Toonami to Adult Swim. Everybody's getting fucked up. Right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> His hair goes down and you just know, like, oh, shit. There's going to be oil everywhere. That's another thing. I think, I think maybe that's also where the idea for Aku's um, design came from. It was, like, that, that had, like, black oil all over the place, that show. That was, like, a visual theme just black inky stuff well he's born from darkness and dark matter yeah yeah totally totally so i mean yeah i mean that that's that's pretty much the long and short of it uh it's a bunch of like um black goo uh and it like when he controls that stuff with his mind and magic powers it um it the the black goo is just kind of like comes up like a liquid, um, gets like really strandy, but um, it ends up forming all the things he can shape shift into. Nice. So yeah, and that's his main power, right? Just shape shifter. I mean, he has. It seems like his power list is like endless, but the I would say the core one is shape shifting for sure. Yeah. 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 Like he has so many powers. It's yeah. What, what what are his, his other powers? powers are, and then and then and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Bodega, you, you're actually um, a pretty good expert on on Aku's powers. Uh, enlighten us, because you were you were. Well, I was, I was about talking about. Joe. I was talking about like his weaknesses. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, so like he could do shape shifting, but if he shape shift, if you put him behind the uh, in front of a reflective surface, it will expose. That's him, and then like they limited his shape shifting to like. He could shape shift into things, but he sticks to the same color palette: green, black, and red. Mm. So he can't shape shift and be other things. He just stays with that color scheme. Yeah. So it's kind of like a tell. Like it's like he wants to be sought out and like caught, but is not. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, we've been me and my girlfriend have been rewatching the old Beetlejuice cartoons, and I don't know if you guys have seen that in a long time. That show holds up so good. But Beetlejuice, same thing. I got to. There's like throughout the whole show. He's always changing, and everything always has that black and white pinstripe thing. Like, he was a snail in an episode. It's like Beetlejuice snail, you know? Yeah. Beetlejuice is dope. Yeah, that cartoon show is so good. Yeah, it's like just like Aku when he shapeshifts. It's like, it's always, he's generally black with the, the red and green, you know? Yeah. Like, when he was like Ikra, the, that girl. Yeah. Like, we knew, as the audience, you knew. The- <laughs> Beetlejuice movie is perfect. It's a perfect movie. Well, because it's Michael Keaton. I don't like, know what about it. It's it's perfect. It's like Jurassic Park. It's perfect. There's, there's nothing. Uh, it still still holds up like entirely. That's to me like the first Ninja Turtles live action movie too. It's like there's not a single thing I would change in that movie. You know, it's like oh, so good. Yeah. So so Amir, what what do you what's your favorite thing about what you did? What are you doing? You're in the zone. He's, yeah. He's been here. This tight face is my favorite thing I did with this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. This, <laughs> if, you're, if you're talking, we can't hear you, just so you know. Me, motherfucker. What? Hello? Yeah. Me, motherfucker. Yeah. That's <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, you can yeah. hear it. Motherfucker. <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I actually did want to say, uh, I, was, I was writing this down because. I actually really, really, oh, that was so cool. I really like 
his name because it just looks so good in text. That was actually well, let's fast forward to my my least favorite thing about this piece. I really wish that I could have just spent time putting text on it because his name A K U Aku it's just it looks really cool and I think just the K in the middle um, it being three letters, it, it it can be a title in itself. Starting with a vowel, ending with a vowel, like yeah, someone he's Italian. With the last name. I don't know. Yeah, three letters is awesome. Yeah, it it's so cool. Uh, yeah, lots it, of lots of room for logo design too. If you wanted to get crazy with his name, exactly. Like, like and and into, honestly, like, some type of kanji to, looking looking logo or something with the Aku. Like, I dare you. You almost go like the the new Dune movie approach, where it's like the same symbols, making like the A and the U somehow, so it's like very symmetrical. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. That's what I mean. Oh, can can I just do something on the fly? Is that a thing? Can we just make a cool ass poster design right now? Oh no, I'll, I'll do that while we're making the show. I'll, I'll make it for the show though. All right, all right. I'm yeah, 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 yeah. So take but a. Yeah. Um, my least favorite thing, honestly, is the fact that I didn't get to spend more time with the font. And, and just writing his name really elegantly. And you know what? That's what I'm going to do before I post on Monster Mash for sure. Because I'm just really hyped about that concept. Um, but to answer your question, uh, and to end it up, my favorite thing about what I did was um, I had limited time on this design. And I just reminded myself that I can convey a concept in a short amount of time without getting into the nitty gritty. And I, I think that I accomplished what I set out to do. Um, and I was just really creative with how I used my time, the time that I had for the show. And I, I more or less finished what I had to do. Um, and it just went to show me that, went to confirm the running theme of my self-improvement this year, that everything doesn't have to be like a 100 hour, like make it or break it type deal. Yeah. Yeah. How much how much time did you spend on it, Amir? Well, you gotta call me out like that. Fuck yeah. Well, you're talking about time, so this is, this is the next question. Wait, I say three, thirty minutes. It's three hour, three hours. Okay. That's off, awesome, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, that's good. Three hours, you're good, man. That, that's yeah. pretty good. <clears throat> and like, and like, I was originally planning on actually doing that three hours at home because you know when you're working at home, you would think okay, everything I do is with all the tools that I generally have around me. But I was called in to do uh, work for Hitbox um, because we're, we're making some big moves right now. And, you know, I'm doing all of this on a laptop at work. And all I really did have was just, you know, my, my, my stylus and the laptop doesn't have enough room on the screen for, like, being at, it being able to adequately use reference. So all of this was off the cuff and just really really fun to do yeah it's cool man maybe that's something to practice in the future try to hit those uh the speed marks get some get some sexiness going yeah i've been you know on that episode we did the earthworm gym episode what stephen oakley said really kept like it, it i've been keeping that in the back of my head and i've been oh, really wanting to try it. I love oakley, that guy. you he gotta really, watch he, it it was so he fun i love that guy he's so fucking funny i love that guy yeah he's Dude, got, he's got he good energy so Okay. Yeah, man. I, 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 oh, okay. When are we going to have him on the show again? Can you guys talk to him? We got two guys. I love yeah. that. Uh, yeah, I'll try to get him on the show again and see what he's up to. You know, I uh, love that guy. Yeah, that guy. He's so. Every time at Comic Con, we, we hang out and it's trouble. And he's just. I feel like he's just like that good positive energy that everyone needs. You know, like he always just brings that. Whatever situation he's in, it always gets elevated because he's in the room where he's talk. Like it's a genuine effort. It's not like this fake person or whatever. I don't know. That, no, that's exactly why I like him. That stood out to me like more than anything else. Just how genuine of a person he was. No, no overinflated. Hey, I'm a big shot in the industry. Ego. Yep. Like, yep. just yeah. That's yeah. always preferred. Like people, real, real people. Like what was know. um. Before before I rudely interrupted you, Amir, what were, where were you saying that he said on the Earthworm Gym episode though that really stuck out to you? Right. Uh, thank you for bringing it back. Hey, you, you should be around. Like, yeah, for yeah, real. yeah. We we got to keep you on, Dave. If, yeah, if, right. if, if if you got time, we'd love to have you on again. Like, yeah. 
I, I love how like your mental presence is really awesome. Yeah, you oh, you, yeah. you bring the fire. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know. Um, but yeah, so Stephen Oakley, he was he was saying that his regiment to getting better at concepting was that he would draw a picture and really try to get to the end of it by um, uh, the duration of a song. So every time he he reaches the end of a song, he flips the page. And then he uses like the fuel of the, the next song to really just kind of extrapolate on the ideas that he had for the last one. And he just goes through a sketchbook like that, you know? That's a, and that's a really cool idea because it seems like you would set up like a playlist that you know, hey, all these songs are about two minutes or about three minutes, so you can kind of control the time. Or it could start with bigger songs and get shorter and shorter so you can, you know, speed get up. faster and faster, yeah. That's a cool idea. Yeah. yeah, no, it's really awesome. And and the, all the stuff he showed us, they were all just like, what, 30-minute drawings and they all looked amazing? Yeah, he's, like, he's a beast. He's super yeah. fast. I, I actually, I really want to do that technique for the class I'm taking right now, um, and I'll, I'll plug that at the end. But it's it's going to help a lot with um, my my design workflow, just like awesome. that idea. Yeah. Well, good mm-hmm. piece, man. I yeah. love it, man. I think it's super cool. Can I give Can I give you like one like if I had one small nitpick? Can I give you? Can I give you? Throw it you? down. Yeah. The only thing is when I blur my eyes, I don't see his like. The horns that I, I saw when you zoomed in. So I'd say if there's a way to like either work in maybe the slightest halo around him or something, so you see that those horns you worked in, because that's such a iconic thing for me with Aku. And when you're zoomed out here, everything's awesome. It's just like that's the one thing I feel like gets drowned in the background a little tiny bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Well, when I post this, I'll work on that for sure. Well, um. I, that that was a huge. It was actually a main point for me to try and get that to read. And um, on my monitor. Uh, as you know, when, when you're working, everything yeah. it's it's separated for you, but you can't really see it until you get that feedback. So, yeah. thank you. That's really valuable. Yeah, I, I love it, man. That's and that was the only thing I'm like, oh, I just wish I popped a little bit more, you know. So okay, hey, okay, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. High five. Yeah, you could just make a silhouette r- pop even, like real easy with just, like a couple yeah. quick adjustments. I think. Here. Yeah. Oh sure. yeah. But but yeah, oh, dude, yeah. great piece, brother. Uh, you got a uh, Dan- Danderful in the chat says great concept, man. Cheers, everyone. Thanks, Danderful. Appreciate that's it. My, that's my dude. That's yep. my dude. That's the dude. Shout outs to Danderful, yo. Shout outs, holler. Um, Dave, you you want to share yours next? Sure. Yeah. Do, do you do you know how to do the thing? You go I to, to the... it, I see a share screen button, so I'm gonna assume it's kind of like Zoom. Yeah, I've never used Zoom, but it like like Google Hangouts, all similar. Yeah. I think they're all kissing cousins. Let me know if you can uh, kiss the cousins. Hey, oh. I'm from, my family's from Missouri, so be careful what you, what you say about kissing cousins. All right, I don't want to, mm. I don't want to offend like, any PC like culture. Ass, if they're watching right now, sorry, family from Missouri, it's okay to kiss your cool. cousin. Can you see my background? Can you see it's my culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I love my cousin. Fuck yeah. you. That's cool. What, hey, what is that? Oh. Here we go. Oh, sorry, I jumped in. But uh, yeah, this is my my take on. Oh, sorry. Can you? I feel like I heard an echo. But uh, yeah, so I, I did mine in ZBrush. Uh, I wanted to do more of them, but because of time constraints, I did just a, a bust. But uh, yeah, my my thing was I want to stick really true to his silhouette as much as possible. I silhouette always seems like an art snob term thing, but really like. He's so iconic looking with those like six horns or whatever, antler things. And because of his shape-shifting abilities and how rigid his structure looked, I really want to go for like a fluid but solid looking thing. So I was trying to go for like solid fire. Antler bone was like what was stuck in my head. So with everything on him, I really want to kind of capture like some sort of flow but still make him feel really rigid and sharp and angular at the same time so yeah. yeah i love i love how you uh incorporated some of the 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 toony aspect into his like you know you married it with kind of a like more more realistic like more realistic forms at the same time it's really cool thanks. man thanks man it was fun like the face kind of came i mean there's not a whole lot of redesign of the face it's just kind of like pushing the elements that were there but then, like, where I felt like the redesign stuff came, it was just kind of, like, pushing things a little bit more, like, carrying... I was trying to find a way to attach the antler horn things to his head, which is really fun. I actually spent way 
too much time on the back, which you won't see, like more than I should have. But I just try to find a flow for how the horns can come down, like from the top of his head into his neck, down into his, like, you know, down into his sternum, I guess. And I don't know. So just trying to make things like his, his, uh, you know, his uh, collarbone have this little flare, the end have this flare. I want to really do like, I want to turn this into like a full figure eventually, but you know, it was fun to focus on just this and try and push that classic expression where he just looks super pissed off, you know, just it's really well to capture and then flow to everything. I was really, I find like a lot of people when they go into ZBrush, they get lost in details really, really quick. And I, I try and stay in form as long as possible. And I, I don't even like going into detail. This to me is as detailed as I'd want to go because past this feels like you get lost a little bit so yeah well, well if you're gonna print it eventually like like a, a lot of the nitty-gritty detail gets lost anyway no it depends on the printer you know like um i mean details are not saying i don't like details details are great but this is just where i find like i i thrive is a lot in just like form exploration trying to make sure like this looks good from as many angles as you know i was trying to really make sure these antlers now like intersected with the negative and positive space kind of a thing and that they weren't all flat on the same plane and one them to have like you know this back to forward flow kind of thing so mm. well yeah. the, the f form's most important just like you know like a gest like a gesture like if you're doing 2d or even 3d like like gestural like you know poses or whatever they they're uh that's that's what makes it like that you can put all the detail you want on a bad form and it's just not gonna it's not gonna take it too far. yeah like icing on a shitty cake it's still a shitty cake you yeah know, you know, the cake's good and the icing enhances it not that that you're relying on the icing so yeah so i'm i'm also colorblind uh i mean i can see color but like if it's blue to purple they kind of overlap a little bit so i just i a lot of my work i just do gray tones i try to i don't want to make them black black so I made him like this dark gray and lighter in the face and the beard and eyes are kind of like this mid-tone sort of thing just so I could see the things pop a little bit but yeah yeah dude it looks great thanks man like, I, I like wow. the uh, like ha hair is always really difficult to do in 3D to make dude, it like, hair sexy. sucks yeah <laughs> it's fun it's fun you know like I mean this this beard was completely asymmetrical these eyebrows I, I cheated these these are completely symmetrical but like this was I really try to make sure there's a way you can flip between material. So I have hotkey set up so I can see like just what the silhouette is. And this is like the one time where I really use it. I want to make sure his beard, he has, he seems to always have this one flare on this side and this one flare on this side and it comes down to this hook. So I just really want to make sure that was kind of like there in the general look. And that looked good from other angles. Yeah, it looks really nice. Thanks, man. Yeah, totally. It was fun. I was, again, like, just... Have, but the whole time I was working on this, this is probably the most fun I've had doing a redesign, like, ZBrush, ZBrush uh, bus sketch. So, it was... And because uh, because of mirror share time, this is this is about eight hours, I think, plus or minus for me. So, uh, I would say, like, the first five were trying to establish, like, most of the stuff there. And then the last, like, three was tweaking and trying to make all this stuff kind of work. So... Yeah, well, I think it was about eight hours. It was like three hours was the first chunk, then two, then two, then three or two. I forgot what the math was, but I think it was about eight hours. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty fast. I, I still need to get into ZBrush. Like I, I, I use the MS Paint of, of 3D programs to do mockups and stuff, which is, is uh, Oculus Medium or oh, Adobe okay, Medium yeah. now. It's uh, it's cool to get like forms like you like, like you know, like if you want to get, but the the detail fidelity is is pretty lacking. Yeah, unless this, uh, ZBrush is so versatile, it's kind of insane how fast you can work out an idea if you kind of know it. Like even if you don't know what you want, like the way a lot of artists I think see stuff in their head and then they just make it. You know, I I don't see things in my head. I I see weird things in my head, but like I like figuring it out as I go. I like to create when I'm either drawing. I I tend to draw and erase a lot with sculpting and ZBrush. I tend to be moving things around all the time. I, I don't have a clear vision. This is exactly what it needs to be, and I'll execute it. It's kind of like I have a general idea, then I'm, I'm always editing and nudging things around. This is why 
I can never do traditional sculptures. You have to have like a really good idea ahead of time because you know armature wires and all that stuff. It's kind of hard to when you're near the end, be like, oh, I want to make the whole head, you know, twenty percent bigger. It's like you can't do that traditionally. <laughs> you know, it's like it sucks. So ZBrush is a super awesome, super forgiving program for that stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Looks great, man. Thanks, Looks man. Really, really fantastic. Like uh, all the shape language is nice. Stick to the the toony, uh, like the to, to the toony, but like real, you know, kind of kind of aesthetic. It's good. Now, but uh, what was your favorite part about what you did? Oh, sorry. Yeah, um, I I was really proud of figuring out how to make the shapes, find a good balance between the classic cartoon graphic look, and then kind of bringing just like a little bit more. Like if if I were to make a live action movie or three D movie, what would I want to push in it a little bit? So I was really happy of finding that shape language balance of the graphic and kind of like pushing things, but not so far where hopefully I would have to explain what it is. You know? Yeah, yeah I don't, for sure. Sometimes yeah. it's tough to keep the essence of something, but I think with Aku, like, man, he's so iconic. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, he's got a lot of like big forms to pull on and make something look real nice. Yeah. Um, w what do you wish it would have done better now that you're done? It was the, the thing I struggled with I mean, if I had more time, I would have loved to have given him a full body, really show like how long and tall he is, because there's only so much you can do when you're doing a bust to kind of like portray that. So I really try to broaden the shoulders and give him a long neck to hopefully kind of lead the viewer into hopefully saying something like that. But I would have loved to have get, like had more time giving him a body and one, or at least one arm kind of coming up would have been super cool. And I, I wish I could have done finding the flow in the detail, like making it feel like it's kind of got movement and it looks like fire. I felt like a lot of times when I was working on the body and the neck, it looked a little bit more, I've, I've sculpted a lot of hair recently. It was feeling a little bit too much like hair. Mm. So my hair felt like it had a, a flame and fire, but it, sculpting like effects is really hard. Cause like fire isn't a solid, you know, wind and smoke isn't a solid. Mm -hmm. So it's always kind of like, you're trying to interpret and translate that into 3D. It's always kind of weird. So. I, I wish I could have pushed the fire a little bit more to feel more like fire. So it felt a little bit like wispy hair. Yeah, that. you got to create your own your own language almost in order to make yeah. that kind of stuff. And and just like uh, I don't know, like if you're doing in two D, like you figure out your way to like render certain things. Is I imagine it's the same thing. But yeah, uh, you pulled it off. Yeah. Awesome, Thank dude. You, man. Great work, brother. Amir, you know when, uh, uh, anything you want to change in my thing? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, no. You're, it, actually, it was awesome. I, I did want to say, because you guys, you guys were having a good chat. I didn't want to interrupt. But Me too. Holy shit, man. Your your beard was sick. The, the forward oh, chin. Like, all of the, the goodness. He looked raw and just oh, like, fuck as hell. That's, that's oh. like the total Amir move. So I approve. Oh, yeah, exactly. thanks, man. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Just like like just think about the concept and do it bigger and meaner and, and with all the love you can muster. Like that's that's the fucking shit and I saw that. Thanks, man. <laughs> well, I yeah. well, I feel like he drew Aku the way Aku thinks he looks like. Because yeah, Aku is so technically <laughs> a really like there's a there's an episode where he where the rope remo he removes the rope and he's just like a scrawny piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. And so based on his, his lore he is that's what he thinks he looks like but to me i also got like you ever see mulan mm -hmm. that's what mushu thinks he looks like yeah like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what mushu thinks he looks like like some badass like because he there was like i see like you have like more of a dragon-esque like ancient dragon like like um form to him that's yeah. why you give him the broad shoulders and uh so yeah that's it kind of looks like to me mushu oh. i think he did really good on uh connecting his his head and then stretching it because sometimes like you could tell when somebody's dragging it but it worked yeah. out thanks man that was like with digital it's very easy for things like you said to look like someone just took it and stretched it or they just took it and shoved it this way like it happens yeah. a lot with fabric and hair and i never want to look i always want to look like oh that's how it was only, you know and a lot of times when you stretch things and you modify things you have to go back in and rework it's not just oh stretch it it's done it's like you stretch it and you have to make sure things retain kind of like their integrity, you know, and yeah. integrity. You did that well. Thanks. That means a lot, man, because I was, I really want to get like that stretched feel without, like, I, I think I tried one where it was a little bit more stretched to start to feel like 
too much, you know, and not enough was like making sure that the porridge wasn't too hot or too cold. Yeah, you started you started going with that Magnum XL look. <laughs> but uh, you know, you gotta yeah. give him that regular style. <laughs> we all can't be winners. Yeah, man, <laughs> the Magnum XL. Speaking of Magnum XL, Star King. <laughs> are, are, are you ready? Are you are you ready to expose yourself to the camera? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, let's let's he got, see. He gotta like rip the packet open. <laughs> <laughs> he always does a pre-show, but you know, you just gotta you know dribble your fingers over to keep it moist so it still works. <laughs> yeah. So that I'm probably, probably the one out of everybody who probably didn't who took the idea of Aku and maybe went a little left. But I don't care if I me. Yeah, that's awesome. Do, do, do that's you, do you Woman, male, he don't care. No. Let me just get it here. Like what I was telling James earlier in the show too was the whole time I was working on this, I felt like I was being too safe, and I kept going through like a million different like if I were to really push this this way or go this way, like that got me really excited, and inspired. Jim, I'm, I'm excited for when people just like go beyond the beyond, you know, not just like. I feel like I see it in the box. I'm, I'm really excited to see yours. It's it, it's tough to keep the essence of something. Like it's sometimes it's fun to like really push it like one way, and then like like the iconic, the more iconic the the thing is, the better, the easier it is to do that. I think like uh, I I uh, it's it's hard because I think that like um, if you love a character a lot, you're not gonna want to change it very much. Star King bounce. He's fucking. He's like fuck that. No. <laughs> <laughs> like uh you had to get the condom bro yeah <laughs> let's see that magnum let me see the wrapper you see it yeah jesus oh awesome. <laughs> oh that's yeah. awesome. that's sick dude <laughs> you maniac whoa that's so man star king you the shit <laughs> yeah i see the trailing body in the background all right, take 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 us take us on the journey, man. So, I was doing research on, on Aku, and they were talking about how oh, we probably base the face off of a Hanya mask, and so I did research on Hanya demons and how they were um, demons that were women that gave into their like they were wronged, um, and so they gave into their jealousy or their rage. Um, and slowly became uh, demons. And the third or final form of that demon is like this serpent type kind of dragon kind of creature. And I thought, oh, it kind of makes sense with the shape that I always think Aku is. He's kind of long and I always feel like he moves around kind of like a snake. So um, I thought about if Aku was actually one of Samurai Jack's like ex lovers or something like that that he did wrong um and so now he has this ongoing battle with this demon that he helped to create um shit so that you was went, you went deep <laughs> that is awesome yeah. bro magnum bro um, magnum. <laughs> no no Mag magnum xl <laughs> we talking about like a lot of space in there yeah, so, um, uh, and I wanted it to be kind of, like, mad disrespectful, so I wanted it to be, like, the first time maybe that they finally met one another again, and it's, like, tearing down Tory gates, um, sort of wreaking havoc, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. and I like, always like to illustrate things before or after the action um to build anticipation that kind of thing so i wanted this to be right before everything was going to go down <laughs> oh cool that's cool i, I wow. really love the rendering of uh, like the uh the the hair like how it's kind of like it's like falling out but like kind of wispy on the head and the, the eyes and the face it's all it's, it's all wonderful man great stuff thanks where did the um the third eye idea come from was that also part of the the mask that was based on or yeah, I was looking around at different masks, um, and I decided to, I guess, mix a few of them. Um, and so that's uh, where 
that came from for me. I wanted to take inspiration from different types of uh, Japanese masks. Um, and I wanted to sort of think about how this kind of demon would look in like maybe a movie or something, or um, or maybe the way that uh, Samurai Jack or the story, I thought of that cartoon as like the, the way it's being told to people, like this is what actually happened. And the fable is what the cartoon looks like <laughs> when it's being told, you know, that kind of thing. So if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, uh, Aku has um, a third eye. Like one of his powers, like uh, he could foresee the future in his dreams. So, I mean, he has it. It's just never been physically represented. Okay. That works. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> I mean... You know what this this story could have been like? Uh, no spoiler alert, but I was reading up on the wiki. In the future, he gets fun. He gets back information from uh, one of his henchmen that like he finally finds out that Samurai Jack doesn't have the magic sword that can slay him. Mm -hmm. And so by the time he gets that information, Jack gets the sword back anyway. So this is him like, yo, I'm gonna whoop your ass, and then Jack's <laughs> like, come at me. Cause I have this, but he already has the sword, so it's too late. So he comes big and bad, cause he's been like ducking him the whole series, trying to see right. if old age is gonna kill him. But then <laughs> he finds out that Jack can't age because of the the whole time portal thing. Mm. So, I think I, that's what you could have been your story. I know stories are tricky, man. I've never yeah. attempted one, ever, cause there's like that's such a tricky thing. But that's a uh, I th I felt they handled it in a fun way, like in a very kind of like basic with clever ideas. I love like what you said, I totally forgot about that thing where Jack doesn't actually age because of like the way he time travel. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. And also he dates Aku's daughter. Yep. I remember. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. like the fifth season, I think. that's. I didn't see that one, but that's one I, I knew. That's why I said spoiler. You should like turn off your headphones and pull nah, it out. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> He's all, thanks, bro. Thanks. It's like, thanks, you fucked it up I for me. I can't wait to see it now. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, James, that came out awesome, though. And I, as the colorblind person in the room, he's completely green, right? Or is he... She. She. Um, she. Yeah, she, she kind of... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's ma'am! It's ma'am! That's cool, though. I love that, like... Like what you said, how you went so far and left with this. I, I love that. Like sometimes it's it's cool to see people like stay closer in the box. It's cool to see like like we, we how you said if the cartoon was based on this in a way and this was off the this fable. Like I love that idea where it's like this is the the original really adult mind fuckery version of this thing, you know, and that's awesome. I love it. Thanks. <laughs> So, so now yeah. that you're now that you're all done, what, what's your favorite part about what you did? Um, I really like the face, and I really like the hair. Um, you know, just overall, that was my favorite part um, of it. Um, and things that I wish I would have changed. I mean, I was trying to add. Uh, because I know Aku has the six, six horns? No, right? Yeah. yeah, six horns. Yeah. So I was trying to change that with like the ears longer would be, you know, one set and then the horns that she has on right now is another set. And I was going to fit another set there to keep up with the six on the head, um, but it didn't quite fit. And I was like, no, eh, I'll just take them out. It's like, you could have um, did but that. But also. Like, nipple horns. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Pasted. <laughs> and, and the version Pasted. of this where she, there was more there in the chest area, some tits, more, more, more dragging down. Um, oh shit! But I left that out. That that would be for my Patreon. You can see the uncensored version. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you're you're, you're <laughs> only fans. That's for your only fans. <laughs> Yeah, he gave us the itty bitty titty committee version. <laughs> yeah. um, but also, um, if I had more time, um, I probably would have, because I have it where you know you kind of have a hint of the the body sort of coming back and up 
around the sort of destroyed Tory gates here. Um, if I had more time, I would have changed the composition a little bit because I was going to add the body coming around into the camera more, like in the foreground, the mid-ground area, um, just to show more of the serpent-type body sort of going in and out of the Tory gates. Right, right. I Sorry. think that'd be a yeah. nice touch. And, and you've shown yourself capable of that because that idea kind of reminds me of one of the first pieces I've seen from you. It was the Diablo redesign piece, the one that looked more like a xenomorph. Yeah. It has that same feel and scale. Like I think you're you're really like good at, at having that body like come around and really create space like it's really coming at you. Yeah, the de uh, depth of field type of type of thing. Yeah. 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 Um how how do you imagine the rest of the body looking like? Um Well, I was more I wanted to have like the the horns or the spikes that she has sort of out of her elbows. I was going to have them on the back like a, the spine but also on the side to sort of like grip and move around kind of thing. And I also like the the Xenomorph's Queen's like egg sack thing. So it was going to be like that, kind of translucent. Um, you can see kind of some guts in there, that kind of thing. That's how I was gonna do the rest of the body. I can totally see that in your style too. That's so that's so <laughs> you. Yeah. Word. Yeah, man. Great oh, piece. See that booty. <clears throat> Always excellently uh, rendered. Can, can you do her voice for us or no? I, yeah, I, I'd be, I cannot. Okay. That would be your that's, that's your area of expertise. I'm here. I'm here. Do the Filipino voice. Let's go. Foolish samurai. <laughs> 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 they like a word that's can, mad easy, mad wrong. Can you go? Foolish! Bastosco! What? What? That means like nasty. That uh, means you're rude. Rude uh, and nasty. Yeah. Star King, could you zoom in a little bit on the face oh, yeah, so we can get a. Girlfriend. She's saying bastos to call. Yeah, I get called bastos all the time. So I don't even know my shot. name anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. I love the subtle work, the subtle texture work that that's uh, it just implies like so much. With uh, that, that's so James, isn't it? Mm -hmm. He's so good at the texture work, and it, and and he can keep it on, like kind of. I don't know if this is the right word, but on brand. Like he just, on yeah, like he, yeah. What you do, James, with your work is like you sell the textures, but it it doesn't seem frivolous. It's always, like. It has a point and intent. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. It's so good. It was it was definitely challenging to sort of translate the masks into like what I think that they would look like in real life, like with the teeth, sort of pointing outwards, or how like would they be in the mouth, like under lips, things like that. So that was also really fun to do. Yeah. This. Totally. Yeah, man. Totally. Great work. Thank you so much. I mean, that's what women look like all the time when you when you piss them off. <laughs> What look like. <laughs> like what you said? They turn it to that. <clears throat> Amen. Um, all right. James, James is like, I ain't saying nothing. No, th this is the moment. <laughs> He's like, I'm as, as James said, this is the moment before the conflict. So she goes, "Does this dress make me look fat?" Nah, it's more like, do I need to shave my legs? Pulled out the sword. No, bitch. Yeah. No. <laughs> do, do, do I, do I say like it, it's bad both ways? She's not too thinny. She's not too thick. You say, yeah, it's fat, but like pretty hot and tempting. You can't win though. Do yeah, I look good? Do I look good? Yeah. So I don't look great. Like what? What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're we're gonna check out Andre Rios. Is uh, he wasn't able to be here? He's here in spirit. Spirit. Spirit Halloween. Yankee Eldama. <laughs> that plug. Here. And uh, I'm going to show you the little uh, the little turnaround that he's got going, and I'm going to read what he said about his piece. Oh, shit. We got the narrator over here. Let's go. Whoops. How do I stop? There we go. Is it there? Yeah. All right. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, we got to make it bigger, though. We got to start over. Make it bigger. 
Yeah, man. Magnum size it. We gotta magnum size it. Show me them nips. All right. Says he says. Wow. He says uh, this was really fun. I really enjoyed the whole process, but my favorite part about my design might be the face, the design of it, and the fact that the eyebrows are not just fire as as a cartoon, but rather g- glowing hairs. I, I tried to take inspiration from not just Japan, but Asian culture in general, and not directly from any mask or, or deity, but rather making something my own way and kind of feels part of the culture. And I think I succeeded with what I wanted, what I wanted but of course I'm open to comments or critiques on what could be improved. The, the part I would have liked to do different is the body. I, I think... I think it would have been cool to do some kind of samurai armor. The approach I did was some kind of charcoal ink, a natural material for the skin, but I, I think a detailed samurai armor could have been dope. What do you think? And here, I'll show you some. I love the body he has. I like that charcoal ink thing. I think the samurai armor would have been like a little too like on the nose for like trying to make it Asia culture kind of a thing. And I think what he has looks like very much on on brand on character and looks rad so yeah he did it. it's, it's really nice work let's see yeah. uh, he's got a, he's got a few here's a here's a bigger shot yeah like you see the smokiness of uh i like that he had the the, the guts to just go full black on the body too because like even with mine i was like I, I just went like that dark gray so i could i didn't want to like lose stuff i worked on but he's just, like he just went there with the high gloss so the light hits in good way like that's really like that makes me want to go and edit mine now i'm like all right fuck it you know just do it don't be a bitch yeah, it looks really nice let's let's yeah the, the, the black is a is a tough tough to design within yeah for sure here's a uh... some more shots shit I've been talking this whole time <laughs> I, I was oh, you tight. on mute how do you do that <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> um, what's it called yeah no speaking of how he managed um, his darker values uh, and that was something I was trying to do with my piece as well but he did it a lot better look at if you can look at that black smoke the way in these um in these shots with the background, he really did a great job in choosing how transparent the smoke should be. And yeah. he really made it a point not to overdo it. Yeah. And it was it's these little dark spots that that really sell that black smoke versus just the whole black smoke shape. It yeah. doesn't get in the way and it's just like very tasteful flavor. That, keep that really well. Yeah, the magical hairs is a cool touch too. Like yeah. he's got like fiery hairs, like uh, little embery things kind of going mm, off. Yeah, like uh, I don't know, like what what are those 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 little filament things you get at Disneyland and they like glow at the end, that kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like sparklers. Mm, no, no, no. Like you know, you know what I'm talking about. Come on. I know. Sure. Yeah, I know. I know. Everybody knows. I'm the I'm the professional. You're the expert. You're the expert. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Extra thick. Extra how do, thick. How do, ah. how, do, how do you want it? Extra thick. That's funny. Wow. <laughs> okay. He couldn't be on the show. He seems like he'd be such a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, maybe on a future show. Like, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get him in here. We'll get him in here eventually. Andre, so, right? Andre Rios. Yeah, he does great work. Andre Rios, if you're watching this, we need you. You're, you're yeah. awesome. Don't be afraid. Yeah, this is this is Amir's humor right here. This is you. You, you touched his soul. Hey, exactly. you touched his soft spot. He touched him somewhere. Sure. Exactly. <laughs> and, and he and he screamed extra thick while he did it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Go. His his design though kind of looks like from the horns, like the. Like that, the the devil in legend. Oh yeah. I want to cut the unicorn's okay. horn off. The devil in legend had those really smooth big ones. The darkness, his name. Mm-hmm. Is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, darkness. Yeah, they feel like I, I think what you're like what you're saying is like how girthy they get in the flow and. Yeah, it's not about the, the texture, but the just like the the shape itself. Yeah. So it's like darkness. 
Yeah. And he's supposed to be darkness, so maybe he got inspiration from darkness Might as well. Maybe. Did you guys, James? Did you guys do a darkness redesign or a legend? Yeah, legend darkness it's, redesign. It's, or? it's been on the Poland Monster Mash, but it ha it hasn't won yet. Well, you got to get your boy for that one if you guys do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he'll knock it out of the park. Yeah, that, that'll be a fun. I've been wanting to do it. I mean, that's a tough one too because that one's super iconic. Super, yeah. yeah. It's basically just like your own take on an awesome ass devil that's already been done. Awesome ass, it's like shit. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah like, like what do you I do? Think... Like, I, that's a tough one. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I got some ideas though. I think I think I could hang. You got to do the South Park version though, like with the dick abs. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so just draw like a penis on his chest. Well, what are you what are you talking about? <laughs> South Park reference when they drew the devil, his his um abs. Yeah, and his or, chest muscles, it, it's a dick. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I didn't dick. know that. <laughs> look at you yeah, look with, at it. with all it's your dick, penis bro. knowledge. You have so much penis knowledge. I love it. Yo, because, you know, men's health. Yeah, men's man. Got to stay on top of shit. Yeah, I'm a show, I'm a, you know what? I'll bring you the book. <laughs> I'll bring you the book. Oh, he's actually going to get a book. Oh, shit. <laughs> all right. We're, we're on my screen. We're, we're going to move to... We're gonna, oh, wait. I wanted to say one more thing. Oh, do it. Dude. Uh, Andre Rios, if you're watching this, your decision to uh, make the head um, not pop out of the silhouette of the neck was a really good choice. It makes it seem like a lot longer and punctuates. Yeah, this is where I get all my work. Well. If you want to zoom in real quick, I just plug yeah, the book good in. Good job. Good right, job. Andre. Let's let's see what you got. It's, right it's here, you. Baby. You show time. The penis, penis book. book. Penis book. That's right. I study this daily. Try to protect my dick from all the witchcraft. <laughs> so those of you are watching the penis book well, who's it by we got a Aaron Spitz <laughs> <laughs> that's right he definitely spits that uh, ain't told me bam alright maybe that's like a and he's a doctor <laughs> Dr. <Okay>. Spitz <laughs> alright awesome here's, wow, here's, awesome. here's mine <laughs> Dr. Spitz <laughs> That's so stupid. Fuck you guys. Fuck you, man. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so, so for my design, I don't know too much about Aku. I know that he likes deals with fire and he has magic and he shape shifts. So I wanted to like try to like in incorporate the like all those simple aspects of that. So uh, as opposed to like the standard like mantle that he has going on, I ended up uh, like doing something that's kind of like tendrils that like uh, like kind of will like change his face if he wants like they like form really quickly like o over his face and change to something else or if he wants to change his whole body obviously that's like a bigger I, I guess move or whatever and then uh, I don't know just uh, not knowing a whole lot about the character uh, yeah fire black that's beard. pretty dope and uh, that's it. That's my guy. Yo, I feel Lord of the Rings inspiration from like the dwarven lore. Like when they're in that like that big battle in that cave. Yeah, like Malrod. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I see. I feel it. it. I yeah, feel it. It feels hot. Where, where uh, where the freaking wizard gets like taken out. Yeah. Like, you shall Malrod. not pass. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the Balrog, man. You know that's that's another about. perfect design. Like, that'd be another one. If there's ever a redesign the Balrog, I'd be like, nope. <laughs> Can't think yeah. so perfect, man. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the one in Lord of the Rings was, uh, like, fantastic. Yeah. I kind of yeah I, <clears throat> that's what I see. I see a Lord of the Rings homage paid. That's like, super cool, James. Thanks, the man. The Balrog has a theme of, like... Is that, like, the Titanic in the back? Uh, Yes. Oh shit! No, no, little it's East not. eggs. No, it's not. It's That's not. a lie. No, I'm the I'm the expert. Don't it, lie to me. It's okay. Then it is. It is. It's the Titanic. Uh, just loose loose forms of buildings and whatnot. Because I don't like. I imagine like he like took over the world. He won, and you know he's burning. He's burning it all down. You know, nice. is that his goal? Like I don't know. No, his goal is to keep everybody miserable, and in uh like. A dark state of being like everybody's in like constant agony and uh turmoil so that's what feeds him because he's darkness he can't destroy them because then he can't he can't rule them 
So you, uh, you have to keep them needing you so that they obey you. Oh, well, maybe he's just keeping everything just just miserable enough to where everybody's like, still uh, okay. He's political. <clears throat> I, like, I like the treatment you gave his hair, the shape. Um, I think a lot of us touched on it. Me, um, Andre Rios, and yourself, that the angle where it's like higher up top and then lower at the bottom. Hmm. Yeah, that looks really cool. Thanks, man. Yeah. But that's that's my thing. Uh, I like the shoulder pads too. It's like uh, it's definitely dope. Like like cell saga status. What's cell saga, man? I'm I'm not the Dragon Ball Z man. I wish I was more nerdy. Watch your cartoons, bro. I wish perfect I was... form cell, yeah. Okay, perfect. No, like he's first form cell, like with the shoulder pads. Oh yeah, I thought you meant like the transformation, like him. Yeah, no, totally. No, like yeah. this is more like first form one. cell. Yeah, the it's not just yeah. scrawny, but with more armored up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I like the treatment you gave his face too. Like he has a snout. It's like a it's a dragon. Yeah, he's a little dragony. I mean, he's kind of dragony, right? A little oh, bit. Oh yeah. The personality for sure. And I can totally I could totally see it like happening in that way too. This is this would be great for film. Yeah. yeah. Like some live action adaptation. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I could see that for sure. Yeah, that'd be yeah. nice. Let's project that to the universe so we can make it happen. Hire, is he like in California? Hire me. Yeah, it is California. <laughs> yeah, he's in California right now. He didn't. He's just standing there. He didn't even do this. It just yeah, we have, there's not enough fire. If this is supposed to be California. That'd be my critique. We need more fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yo, it's just out here roasting. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that that's my thing. Hope you guys like it. If you oh, don't, yeah. then. I don't I don't know what to do about it because this is this is what I got. <laughs> it is what it is. Your favorite part about what you did. My favorite part about what I did is uh, I don't know. It, it came together fairly quickly. Like I I, I think I busted it out in like uh, like two two work days. So like you know maybe maybe fifteen hours or so put nice. put into it and. Uh, my, my least favorite part, I don't know. I like I, I'd like to get into. I, I need to s screw around with ZBrush because uh, I like right now I'm like a day walker. I'm doing like some illustration stuff. Like if I would, I could paint this. It would take me a long time though. Uh, uh, but uh, exploring forms more, like more more closely to the actual form of the thing instead of just uh, doing loose mock-ups and then like painting over them or using them as a guide. Uh, I don't know. I I'd like to uh, I'd like to dive into that a little bit more. But but yeah, that's that's it. So oh, I finished that logo. Oh, let's see it. Alrighty. Ah, cool. Did you do like diagonal? Whoa. Yeah, that's what I had in mind. Oh, there you go. Oh, shit. That's dope. <laughs> You're funny, man. I dig it. I, I want to see the letters more kanji like, though. Oh, yeah. Maybe like have like a like cool ass brush strokes going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. I want. That might be cool, too. Shit. So many good ideas. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, there's so many ways you can organize this text. It's It's just really nice letters to work with. Yeah, I would do a diagonal though. But uh, <clears throat> all right, let's wrap it up. Anybody got any projects or anything that they want to want to uh, share to the people that are watching? That you know, what you got? Yeah, uh, I'll go. Shit, at Hitbox we're working double time to keep up with the times, and we are flooded up to our necks right now with uh, just orders on orders on orders. Top players have picked up the controller in Japan and now everybody in Japan is trying to get their hands on it. So if you guys want to show some love, uh, just create a lot more work for us and buy more hitboxes because everybody's getting on it right now. Uh, yeah, and you, we, we might be backlogged for a while after this. So uh, get, get your hands on one as soon as possible. Sweet. Right on. Hell yeah. <clears throat> 
Uh, Shout out to Dustin. Shout out to Dustin. <laughs> oh, Dustin. I have one more thing. Um, I'm taking this cool ass class that I wanted to shout out. Um, if you guys ever get the opportunity to uh, sign up for a brainstorm class, uh, uh, sign up for anything taught by James Paik. He's a really fucking cool teacher. Um, I shouldn't use that word right next to his name, should I? But <laughs> while I'm trying to pitch like an industry professional. Uh, but yeah, he's a, the, the class I'm taking right now is super informative. It's helped me so much. What's he teach? Like what kind of class is it? Well, the one I'm taking is Entertainment Design 2. Um, he does Entertainment Design 1, and I believe he's taught uh, environment stuff, and he had a mentorship out for a while. Really? So it's it's definitely worth it um, if you ever try. Uh, I, I bought it, and right now I'm surrounded by such amazing artists and growth opportunities. It's it's kind of bizarre, to be honest. That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, um, definitely, if you got the cash and you want to get good at art, uh, head over to James. He's a really good teacher. Right on. Anybody else? Once, twice. I'm a tweeter head. We're making He-Man statues. So, you know, we have Hordak up for pre-sale, which is, I love it. Vampire robot, bad guy. And uh, we have a couple new pieces coming out before the end of the year I'm really excited about. So there should be a couple of new fun things I got to work on. And uh, been able to work with a lot of, work with Amilcar Fong on One Piece, the Hordax Mini, which is a little bat creature, which is going to be up for pre-sale hopefully by the end of this month or early next month. Super excited about that. Working with Geo Nat, uh, Nat Pill on a, on a project right now too, and that's exciting work with him. So working with a bunch of cool creature designer guys and some creature design stuff. So. You, work, you work with Amilcar. You know, did you know that Amilcar was on the show too? Yeah. Yeah, you did the He-Man one. I was kind of jealous. I was like, what the fuck? You know, but no. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. He, he showed me his Skeletor after the fact. I'm like, what? And poor Battle Cat, man. Poor yeah. Battle Cat. <laughs> like, yeah, it had a wheelchair and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, no. he, he had all the lore like planned out in his head, which was like, yeah. uh, he should write it down. Like, it, it, it was pretty uh, in-depth. It was, it was really cool. The only thing I was pissed off about is Merman's my boy, and he made that the skull on his staff. Like, Merman was dead. I was like, you can't kill Merman. You gotta make Merman <laughs> awesome, you bastard. So, he was kind of dead to me when he did that. But, you know, Mirakar is awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate. He's working on another project with me right now that I can't say too much about, but I think it's going to be a, a fucking showstopper, and we can announce that one, so... Awesome. Yeah, yeah, can't wait to see it. He does great work. Love yeah. American Car's work. Anybody else? I'm Once. working on a, a mentorship. I got my two managers right here, Amir and James. <laughs> you know, James Starkeen, if he wants to, he could be part of my deal. Um, and yeah. if you want to be like Bodega and know nothing about everything, come holler me for five payments to twenty five ninety five. All right. I hear you. All right. I'm already I'm signed up. I'm signed up. I'm on your only. Well, you fans. get a free one because you're my manager. But I'm still on your only fans. Like I, I want the extra content. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> only fans is from my back. I get to show my back off. Yeah. It's just beautiful. You know what? My back. It's Harry. He needs a he's a nice shave. Yeah. I like Harry back. I'm into that. I get to walk into like Italian doorway guys. sideways. Nothing but <laughs> Italian. I like Italians. <clears throat> James, uh, what about you? you? Got anything to plug, man? Uh, sh- yeah. I got a. I got, I got a little bit of merch. Uh, you guys go head, head on over to grcoffrin.com. We got we got you need a phone case. We phone got some cases. phone cases. You you want some cool? You want a you want a cool shirt? I think I may have given you one. Of Look cool. at that bag, bro. I think Look I may have bag. given given you one. Did I give you a shirt, Dave? I think I gave you a shirt. Yep. Yep. Uh, you gave Dave a shirt, and I don't have a shirt yet. I didn't. Uh, see, I've never seen you in person. We see him, and you're all the way out in Vegas. So drive out here. Y'all like neighbors, bro. Yeah, come yeah, get it. Good. You want to come to my house? You can. You can have a shirt. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> the only thing separating them from seeing each other is a forest fire. That's right. That's it. Or uh, like 28 and traffic forest fires. Yeah, or whatever. And, <laughs> and traffic, a lot of traffic. Uh, <laughs> ne- next show is Genie from Aladdin. We're going to be redesigning Genie for another Monster Mix episode. So that should be a fun one. Um, that one will be happening on the 4th of this coming month. Uh, same same time, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Joining me today are David Igo, Amir Alam, hey. Bodega Knights, and Star King. James Star King. You guys can check out uh, 
everybody's work below there's a link to everybody's amazing portfolios so if you guys want to uh, see some awesome artwork and uh, explore the other dark and gritty stuff these guys are doing I suggest uh, taking a peek at it uh, but that is all for now goodbye everybody Thanks, have a good man. one it was awesome great work everyone yeah keep your yeah. penises healthy people <laughs> healthy penises Aaron Spitz I love Be a part of the next show or have a hand in the votes. Like us on all the social medias and subscribe to this channel. As always, thanks for tuning in to Monster Mix.